Hey there, all you wanderlusters and retirement dreamers. Brian the Lion here again, 42-year-old American living in the Philippines for almost a year now. So you've been slogging through the grind, dreaming of white sandy beaches, swaying palm trees, and perhaps an endless supply of tropical drinks. Why do you think so many of your fellow Americans are ditching their hometowns for the sun-soaked shores of the Philippines? Is it just for the stunning views? Or perhaps there's a secret they're not telling us. Today we dive deep into the heart of this tropical paradise to uncover the truth behind the expat hype. Is it the allure of living a luxurious lifestyle on a budget that's less than your monthly Starbucks spend? Or maybe it's the promise of eternal summer that has them trading in their snow shovels for snorkels. Join me as we put these palm-fringed retirement fantasies to the test. I'll discuss the locals, tangle with the expat community, and maybe even dodge a scooter or two on the bustling streets of Manila. Who knows, by the end of this, you might just find yourself looking up how to say one-way ticket, please, in Tagalog. So buckle up, grab your sunscreen, and let's find out if retiring in the Philippines is everything it's cracked up to be, or just a clever scheme to make sure every day is a no-snow day. And remember, if at any point you feel the urge to pack your bags, don't blame me. I'm just here to show you the ropes. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future adventures. Flashback to the domesticated jungle of Portland, Oregon, USA, where every backyard is a micro farm and your neighbors are just as likely to trade you eggs for kombucha as they are to join a drum circle. You see, back in the Rose City, I had myself a little slice of the pastoral pie right smack in the urban sprawl. And by pie, I mean a couple of chickens, which, let's be honest, are the gateway livestock to full-on farmer status. So there I was, strolling into the local feed store with the kind of swagger only a man about to become a poultry farmer could muster. I plunked down three bucks, that's a mere dollar fifty per chick, and I walked out with two balls of fluff that could sit in the palm of my hand, already dreaming of the farm-fresh omelets that were mere months away. These weren't just any chicks, oh no. They had the run of the mill, literally. Because you know, Portland. No countryside sprawling acres for these ladies. They were city slickers through and through. They roamed the neighborhood like feathery vigilantes, occasionally mistaken for whimsical lawn ornaments by the untrained eye. My house, an unlikely farmstead, sat proudly in the middle of all this, complete with a hammock strung between a plum tree and a fig tree. On those blissful summer afternoons after the daily grind, which mostly involved avoiding real work, I'd retreat to my hammock oasis, and like clockwork, my feathered comrades would waddle over, their tiny dinosaur feet pat-pat-patting across the grass. Jumping onto the hammock was a spectacle, picture it. Two grown chickens flapping and hopping with the grace of a toddler at a ballet recital. But they made it every time. There they would perch, one on each side like feathery bookends, settling into the rhythm of our swaying slumber. Together we'd drift off, the three of us enveloped in the sweet, soporific summer air, lulled to sleep by the scent of plum and fig, the distant sounds of the city, and the occasional disgruntled cluck when one of us, usually me, hogged too much hammock space, and every morning as reliable as a hangover after a night at the local dive, I'd find a couple of brown eggs waiting for me, a small, delicious token of appreciation from my backyard brood. Eggs so fresh they'd scoff at the ones you find in the supermarket with their dubious sell-by dates and questionable life choices. In the heart of Portland, with a pair of chickens as my sidekicks, I mastered the art of urban farming, or at least the art of napping in a hammock with livestock. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. And who better than a man and his chickens, pioneers of the urban farm frontier? Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell so you follow every moment of my life. As I lounged in that hammock, the gentle sway and the soft clucking of my urban feathered friends at my side, it struck me how utterly peaceful it was, a rare slice of serenity carved right out of the bustling heart of Portland. I couldn't help but muse. This must be the kind of peace that's become a rare commodity back in the States, more elusive than a sincere politician. And here's the kicker. 
Many Americans, just like me, are chasing after this elusive tranquility. We're all gold rush miners panning for serenity instead of gold. But as luck, or maybe fate, would have it, this sort of calm isn't just found in the backyards of Oregon. No, it spans across oceans, all the way to the sunny and hospitable shores of the Philippines. And let me tell you, it's not just the mangoes that are sweeter over there. Now residing in BGC Manila, I find myself amidst the electric buzz of city life. It's the kind of place where you can lose yourself in the neon lights and find yourself in the steam rising from a street vendor's cart. But even in the heart of such frenzy, one can't help but dream of what lies beyond the city's relentless pulse. Perhaps one day I'll trade the bustling streets for a quiet nook in some scenic province where the pace slows down just enough that you can watch the sunset without worrying about missing anything. Maybe I'll raise chickens again, find a new pair of clucking companions to share in the simple joy of a hammock nap under a provincial sky. Maybe that's the kind of escape many of us are searching for, especially those of us with more yesterdays than tomorrows. The Philippines, with its promise of endless summers and warm smiles, offers just that, a place where Americans, weary from the high-speed chase of the American dream, can find a corner of the world where the dream is a little softer, a little slower, and a lot more attainable. It's not about running away, it's about walking towards something simpler, something that resembles the peace we once knew, or maybe the peace we only heard about from our grandparents. So why do Americans retire in the Philippines? It's not just for the affordable health care or the tropical beaches. Though let's be honest, those don't hurt. It's for the chance to reconnect with a part of ourselves lost in the shuffle of the daily grind. It's for the chance to live out our days in a place where serenity isn't just a marketing slogan for spa retreats, but a tangible, everyday reality. And as for me, whether I'm weaving through Manila's chaos or eventually settling down in a serene spot somewhere between a rice paddy and a coconut grove, I'm looking for the same thing, aren't we all? A bit of peace, a dash of serenity, and maybe a chicken or two to share it with. After all, isn't that what we're all searching for in this mad scramble we call life? And that, my friends, might just be why Americans are finding their sunset years in the Philippines more golden than ever before. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. Don't be shy, you know you want to. Now let's imagine for a moment that you're me. You've got this whimsical notion of playing hopscotch between a swanky city condo and a breezy countryside house. One foot in the chaos, the other in the calm, like a life-sized version of Twister, only with real estate. Back in the land of the free and the home of the brave, this dream would chew through your wallet faster than a tax auditor through a loophole. But here in the Philippines, it's a whole different ball game. In the States, trying to juggle a condo in the city with a retreat in the sticks is a financial fantasy on par with owning a unicorn. The kind of thing you only really see if you're either hallucinating or have a tech mogul's bank account. But here in this archipelago of endless summer, my diligently hoarded American dollars stretch like the last three minutes of a yoga class. Yes, the kind where you're thinking about breakfast tomorrow. A condo in the bustling heart of Manila and maybe a charming little cottage in the provinces. Not only possible, but pleasantly affordable. Let's paint a picture of life here, financially speaking. Back home, you might drop a small fortune each month just to keep a roof over your head and your car filled with gas. Here, that same fortune could have you living the high life. We're talking about dining out on succulent Lashawn, sipping cocktails by the beach, and still having enough left over to ponder why you ever thought a nine to five job was the only way to make a living. And the cost comparison? Let's just say if living expenses were a race, the Philippines is cruising in a charmingly decorated jeepney, while the US is stuck in traffic in a gas-guzzling SUV. Everything from the mangoes, which by the way, tastes like they've been kissed by the sun, to the smiles of street vendors selling you handmade crafts, it's all delightfully more accessible. It's not just about being able to afford it though, it's about the quality of life that comes with it. In the city, when the endless stream of horns and the non-stop hustle gets to be too much, it's just a short trip to my quiet retreat. There, the loudest noise might be the occasional karaoke session drifting over from a neighbor's backyard. 
because no Filipino party is complete without a heartfelt rendition of My Way. So switching between the electric energy of Manila and the tranquil vibes of the countryside isn't just a fleeting fantasy. It can be a reality for my sunset years without costing an arm and a leg. It's about freedom, the kind that doesn't come attached to a crippling mortgage or the ominous shadow of financial ruin. And therein lies the not-so-secret allure of this tropical haven. It's a place where dreams don't have to stay dreams, where a guy like me can live out that fanciful idea of dual domiciles without sacrificing an arm, a leg, or my sanity. Here I can bask in the glory of my hard-earned dollars, making the most out of a retirement that feels more like a reward than a retreat. Now isn't that a life worth living? Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell. Doesn't cost a thing. Well, except maybe your soul. But hey, it's a small price to pay for quality content, right? Let me take you back to a simpler, albeit more cumbersome time. My childhood adventure to Italy at the tender age of seven. It was the first time stepping foot in a land where English wasn't the first language. And let me tell you, it was like being teleported to a different planet. Suddenly I was this tiny alien navigating a world of strange sounds, even stranger food, which by the way was mind-blowingly good, and sights that made the pictures in my school books look like cheap knockoffs. Italy grabbed me by the shoulders and shook me awake, forever changing me from the boy I was into the man I would become. Returning to America after that, culture shock of the mundane variety, I tried to hold on to that magical world by exchanging letters with my Italian cousins. Picture this, me scribbling away on that flimsy airmail paper. So thin it made tissue paper look rugged, pouring my soul into words that would travel across oceans. The anticipation of waiting weeks for a reply was a sort of exquisite torture only a child can appreciate. Fast forward to today, and the landscape of connection and travel has metamorphosed more dramatically than a caterpillar into a butterfly. Waiting weeks for a letter? Please, that's practically medieval now. With a few taps on a smartphone, you can video chat real time with someone halfway across the globe, no stamps required. Messages zip through the ether faster than you can say gelato. We've never lived in a time more conducive to travel and exploration. The globe is literally at our fingertips. Want a breakfast in New York and have dinner in Paris? That can be arranged. The world has shrunk to the size of a village, a global village, where you can hop from one house to another with the ease of crossing the street. This accessibility to traverse the globe has birthed what I like to call the where treated best philosophy. It's a consumer's market for countries. Don't like the weather? Move. Taxes too high? Sayonara. Want a scenic backdrop for your daily grind? Hello Philippines, or Italy, or wherever the compass of your heart points. We live in a golden age of mobility. With technology and resources at our disposal, the only real question is, why stay put? Our ancestors crossed treacherous oceans on rickety ships chasing the mere idea of better. What's our excuse? With advanced airlines, high-speed trains, and the omnipotent internet, we're more equipped than ever to chase not just better, but best. So as I sit here reflecting on that little boy bewildered by the wonders of Italy, I can't help but think we've come a long way from waiting on handwritten letters. We're pioneers of a new era where distances are short and possibilities endless. We're not just citizens of our birth countries, we're citizens of the world. And if that's not a reason to pack up and explore, I don't know what is. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell so we can keep exploring this brave new world together. If life is a book, then by all means, I've been trying to read it in one sitting. I've ticked off more than 50 countries from my ever-expanding bucket list. Europe, Italy, Germany, Spain, Croatia, you name it. Each place, a chapter with its own unique flavor and tales to tell. Italy seduced me with its pasta, Germany impressed with its precision, Spain dazzled with its fiery dances, and Croatia. Well, let's just say I left a piece of my heart in its crystal clear waters. But amidst all these wanderings, the Philippines has managed to tie a lasso around my globe-trotting heart and anchor me down. Who would have thought, right? If I'd lent my ear to the naysayers, the fear-mongers, warning against setting foot in this archipelago, 
I'd have bypassed one of the richest chapters of my life. Sure, the Philippines isn't without its quirks and quibbles. You'll find yourself wrestling with the notorious Manila traffic, which moves about as fast as a tortoise on sleeping pills. And sometimes the bureaucracy can feel like you're trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. But what corner of the world doesn't come with a side of frustration? Here the air smells of sea salt and opportunity. The beaches offer miles of solace in the sunsets. They're like front row seats to the greatest show on earth. And let's not skip over the people, some of the warmest you'll ever meet, with smiles so genuine you'll forget about the smog and the chaos that sometimes wraps around the cities like a thick scarf. Calling the Philippines home has its array of adventures. Every day is a little bit like stepping onto a movie set where the script is written on the fly, the props are a bit unpredictable, and the extras in the background are always up for a laugh or two. You might say it's the perfect locale for someone who's lived a bit of a nomadic symphony, sampling notes from each country, but finding a recurring melody here. Living here is living proof that the essence of travel isn't just about crossing borders or ticking off countries. It's about finding a corner of the world that speaks to you. A place that holds you tight even when the novelty wears off. The Philippines, with all its imperfections and surprises, fits that bill for me like a well-worn travel jacket, tailor-made for the soul who still thirsts for adventure but craves a place to belong. So as I look forward to more pinning on the map, more stamps in the passport, I'm content knowing that each journey outwards only sweetens the return to this archipelago of dreams. After all, isn't that what any seasoned traveler is searching for? A spot on the map where the heart can sigh, unfurl its wings and say, ah yes, here, here's good. And for now, for me, here's the Philippines. And really, I wouldn't have it any other way. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with my adventures. Who knows where we'll end up next.